There have been a different, uh, uh, different uh, serving of brunch this morning. That is King Austin with progress. And in, in, in Beaver, uh, Beaver Henderson is my guest. Uh, Beaver is the man who uh, they woke up at uh, what is it, seven o'clock in the morning, went down to the studio, took the work that was basically put down by Winsford Joker, and brought it into immortality uh, on wax, which is what we're hearing right now. Well, give me your best uh, memory of a man that we we were celebrating all of last week and should continue celebrating for a long time, King Austin. Um, don't take my word for it, um, because it's a living proof of it. Mm-hmm. The guy was class, and I'll show you how he's class. Go on to YouTube and, f- and look for his Dimash Gra performance. Mm-hmm. In the middle of the song, mm-hmm. as inevitable is, the breeze changes directions in the savannah. Right. And he was wearing a top, he was wearing a hat. Okay. And the hat flew off. And in the middle of a line, he just bent while singing, picked up the hat, flipped it back onto his head and continued singing. <laughs> and I'm watching this thing, it's like, it's almost like it was rehearsed. Not it was almost, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The guy mm-hmm. was cla- mm-hmm. utmost class. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, I mean, uh, um, I'm following his, his son, actually, Marvin, um, on Facebook, we are friends. And the story, I mean, I know him as, he was an animal lover. So sometimes, you know, King Russell come in the studio and you, psh, psh, psh. you think it's a bird. And he just... He's talking to the birds. Mm. He's like that. He was okay. like that, you okay. know. Okay. But um, he was a guy of class, very humble, very quiet. I've never heard him raise his voice. There's a question. There's a question, yeah. you know, because uh, Winsford said he wrote it for the Mighty Sparrow, but there are many who also believe that had Sparrow sung that because he was Sparrow, it would be it, Sparrow with a song, but a new voice of King Austin brought a certain freshness to it and attention to not just the arrangement, but the lyrics that they may not have received with Sparrow. Mind you, Birdie, you've done some great work. Uh, no don't disrespect take away from to Sparrow, that. Yes. Mm-hmm. but this song would not have, this would not have been anything like it was, right. it is as it right now. Because it would have been looking at him that carnival time for the latest road march or the biggest song and it would have taken away from a serious message like this because this exactly. is not something that related to the politics of the day mm. but it was about the ecologies about man's behavior it's about man's interaction the entire civilization right, let, me, let me tell you um it was part of, of the compilation and it was it stood out so much um it almost embarrassed the other songs on you know the, yeah. the album mm. because it played and it played and it played yes it played as a matter of fact, I think I saw you posted something online um, on Facebook, one of your old charts. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And that was somewhere oh, yes. down in the year. Yeah, 1980, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. and actually, um, Progress had just come off of number Keep one. Number one, that's right, yes. It was 10 weeks at number that's one, right. something like that, that's just right. come out late. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so if Sparrow did it of Kitchen It, it wouldn't have been the same thing. Yes. yes. And the song eventually mm. became, it was voted, the Calypso of the Millennium of it the Century. Yes, as it should be, yes. Um, it's yes. just a powerful song. It's Phenomenal like, song. It's and like Mob Marley's War or one of those, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, you take that there, there are a few songs that, that qualify in that position, I think. Unquestionably, that is, is top of the list. Uh, a couple by Birdie. There's also one by singing Sandra, Voices from the Ghetto, and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, those yeah, are yeah, just yeah, things that just belong. Yeah, but yeah, let, yeah. Let, let me go back. In this whole question of the diversification of our economy and the ability to export the art form in general, but we're dealing specifically with the movement, the march, of Soka, uh, you know, before we be, before we went to, to to pay tribute to King Austin, we were talking about uh, the Pelham Goddards. We're talking about the Watson. We are talking about uh, the Rash Shorty Eye, and so on. So there was a movement, uh, like all music, it's evolving. It started out mm-hmm. with one uh, one down payment, as it were, uh, mm-hmm. from from Shorty, and then many other people came and made deposits, and the movement started. Uh, give me your best recollection of that. How it moved into the what was eventually just called called the soul of Calypso. Because somewhere along there, as you know, Ras uh, Garfield had something with Jabu and that kind of thing. So, you know, you had a, you had a whole lot of different uh, spottings of different things happening on the road to the so- Soka Junction. Actually, um, when first, I mean, it, all right, I see music in color. You know, I'm, I'm different. Mm-hmm. I see music in color. Um, so when I close my eyes, I see music, right? Um, so when something is purple to me, I know something is so totally right. <laughs> I remember being on stage, it was in Harvard, I think that must have been 1972, in the Last Supper, playing in the Last Supper with Robin Imam and Derek Bateson, right? I remember the supper. And the DJ put on, we were about to go on stage, and the DJ put on a song. Um, it was, I can't remember which was, it was Indrani or Endless Vibrations, or one of them. Mm-hmm. And something just clicked, and it's like, 
I didn't exist in effect. I was just lost into the music. And I knew something was about to happen musically, globally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, mm. all right. So, and the night went on and the carnival went on and I forgot about it. That's interesting that you mentioned that, by the way. Something happened inside of there, but uh, that thing, it could have been vibration. But by any chance, would it have been a little bit of Indrani or anything like that? Or was yeah, it it's between because, Indrani yeah, and yeah, that that's vibration? That's right in the era there, because that, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that was a Sir John and the Chutney, Chutney Soka, as it were, or yeah, Chutney yeah, Music. Definitely. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, the, it was changing because, you know, I, I, my gift is, is, is seeing the market maybe five, ten years ahead. And immediately when something new happens, like when I see purple, my first reaction in public is to watch the public's reaction to see <laughs> if they're feeling the same vibe as me. Okay. And the whole party's vibe changed. It got very positive, very energetic. Mm. And I know something was about to happen, but I couldn't put my finger on it. All right, so life went on. Then my first experience at Sempwell after the first couple of months of the session, I was blessed to sit down on a session. No, this had nothing to do with soca. This has to do with Calypso. Mm-hmm. And this was just before the whole soca blow open at Semp and, and KH. I sat on a witness the actual recording. I didn't play. I was just privy to allow to be sitting on the session to one of the greatest Calypso recordings ever happened in life. Valentino's Life is a Stage album. Hey. That album is a jazz Calypso hey. album mm-hmm. um, with Purple um, Smokey Joe and all those things. To me, that is the best Calypso album ever, 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 mm-hmm, ever done. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to go on a stage or produce a show that, I mean, perform some of that music again. That's the jazz. You're talking about the, the, the folks like Xander, Raph, and that, 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 that kind of that kind of mm-hmm. jazz soca thing? No, those guys weren't even there yet. They weren't um, even there yet. No, because okay. Stanley, actually, is the, who had that foresight was Stanley Sharman. Okay, okay. Stan Sharman, yeah. Stan mm-hmm. Sharman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His brother, Clive Sharman, was the bass player for one of the top jazz groups in the US, okay. the Jeff Beck group. So Clive came down, bass player, and the keyboard player, this white boy who knows nothing about Trinidad and Calypso, and, them, and he hears Calypso and got freaked out. Mm. And between the, um, him, Clive, um, who was a, uh, Stanley Sharman on guitar, and Errol Wise on drums. And just for them, nothing else. Mm. And Valentino. Just go back and listen to that album. You understand the level of music that was there. Okay. Um, mm. Unbelievable. Anyway, and around the same time now, Shorty had just switched. I think he was recording in Cage, but she switched to came across the Semp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it was Endless Vibration and stuff. But one of the albums he did, and again, I was privy to sit on. I didn't play because his keyboard player was Frankie Callender at the time. Ella Andel was lead vocalist for him. Um, Gail McLean, all the, um, those vocalists. Mm-hmm. Um, Junior Warwood was his guitarist. On the album, he had a song that explained what Soka was. Remember um, Memphis Souls 2 by King Curtis? Yes, yes. Shorty had a song. Put a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of yes. that, and then mix well. Yeah. Exactly, and this is what <laughs> Soka is. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. again, I was privy mm-hmm. to sit down in session to analyze everything that Soka was from Shorty's perspective. Mm. And that mm. is what built me into getting my, you know, my diversified song to Soka then. Mm-hmm, after that. Mm-hmm. While this is happening now, Pelham is in cage with Maestro. Um, then you have Ed Watson, who lives down in Carnage. Yes. And does not listen to local radio, because where he was, all he could pick up was Venezuelan stations. <laughs> up so, up the hill one up time. Up on top yes. of the hill. Yes. <laughs> so he has a blend between Latin music mm-hmm. and the soca thing that's happening here now. So he has a whole different spin on the whole thing that's happening. Yes. So everybody has their own little mm. pocket. and it's, So that was a variation that was mm. coming. So it wasn't very um, monophonic. You know, it, was, it was diversified. So everybody had their spot inside there. Um, so everybody created the sound. Mark and I, my song was off of a keyboard. Um, Ed Watson, I can't remember Ed Watson. He was a keyboard player too, but he had a unique, his Latin horn sound. Mm-hmm. is what created mm-hmm. Sugar Boom Boom. Yes. I rest yes, my case, yes. right? Um, and singing now, you gotta get away, but that, that, that kind of horns. Yep. Um, Pelham, on the other hand, Pelham is the one that had the most full sound. Um, no. I mean, I could tell you well something technically. No, Pelham is more musically trained than most of us at the time. I mean, classically, mm-hmm. music, classically, theoretically music trained. Um, because a lot of us, we came from the bands and, you know, we just, from the fun thing and develop. Um, 
Pelham had a, a, a rounded knowledge and his orchestration was totally, totally different. Mm -hmm. So everybody had a sound. So where an artist, you went to a producer for a sound. Eventually, Shorty came round to me. Um, no, it came to Simp um, because he's Pupus Sharm and he wanted, I guess they wanted the sound I had created. And I co-produced basically the album with Shorty, the Om Shanti album. Mm, so mm -hmm, if you listen mm -hmm. to Progress mm -hmm. and you listen to like Who oh God Bless, Little Man Curse, Om Shanti, yes, all them things, yes. it's the same sound. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I was just trying to find something here. Go <laughs> ahead, Viva. I apologize for no, that. No, yes. no problem, no mm -hmm. problem. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, there was a sound. Um, and I also did Kitchener's first Soka album. Because there was an argument, oh, I remember, I'll tell you the exact year, it was 1976, when Sparrow was doing um, his 1977 album called Boogie Beat 77, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. King Kong and Sparrow, whatever it is coming down. And um, Belfast had arranged the album for him, and for the first time they were gonna use synthesizers, you know, they were, that was when the thing was breaking into soca, and the, the, in other words, the underground artists were breaking into soca. Mm -hmm. But um, the big name crew. Mainstream, they were yeah, hesitant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I say, that is not Calypso, and I'm never going to do no soccer. What nonsense is that? And blah, 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 oh, blah, yeah. Blah. Remember but, those days, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> well, it's the same thing we have happening now, by mm -hmm, the way. Mm -hmm. um, and Sparrow and, and Kitch vowed they would never do the soccer nonsense. And, but Belfast was adamant that the sound had to change mm -hmm. and brought in Beaver to do the synthesizers, because I was a synthesizer specialist in those days, I was very electronic, still am. Mm -hmm. So, um, just to be safe, we rented every single synthesizer in the country, besides the ones we had at Simp. <laughs> I went to Harry Mahabi, to all the Indian bands who had every synthesizer, and lined up every synthesizer in the country on the wall. The only synthesizer I didn't have was the ones that Cage at Pelham and them good guys had. But yeah. I rented everyone else. <laughs> and he wrote lines you know, for synth and all that. And when it was my turn to put it on, Sparrow said, uh uh, that is not Calypso, I want that on my album. And that was it. Couldn't argue. Right, right. Right. Um, two years later, Kitchener came by me and did his first Soka album, Soka Jean. You know, and then that's when the whole thing just tumbled. It just popped off. It just tumbled after that. Now, that, that direction of Soka, as you said, it, 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 it's, it's a. I'm going to grab a little bit of Om Shanti because we got to, we, we got to put that on for a minute. But, sure. the, but, but this whole uh, coming together, the movement, at what point there it was never a point of unanimity. Not, not everybody at any point said, yeah, this is definitively the sound of Soka. But what occurred? What happened? Which particular hit was able to fuse all these ideas coming from all these entertainers with a little bit of the Roomba, a little bit of the Zook, a little bit of the Salsa, putting this whole thing together and coming to the world ex world's acceptance or, or the, the, the populist acceptance of this is Soka. What, 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 what did it? Um, I think actually what happened was in the dance hall. Uh -huh. Because right after that, um, well, Semp had closed down, I think, about two years later mm -hmm. because I was producing a hit a month, sometimes two a month. I was just, just turning it out, turning yep. it out. But I was having a problem. Oh, in case you guys are wondering, the voice you're hearing is that of Carl Beaver Henderson. Go ahead, Carl. <laughs> um, my problem, I was getting problems to market my stuff after now mm. beyond the little closed circuit that we are in Trinidad. And I decided I needed to go out back on stage. Mm -hmm. Fireflight was born. Around the same time Fireflight was born, Chandler was born just yes. before that, Charlie's Roots, Song Rev. Charles Resson, mm -hmm. Song Rev, mm -hmm. Blue Ventures. You see, that was a big movement that happened. Ah. That was thrusted over. Mm. And when those f big five bands got together, the world stood still I got for you. Soka. And I that got was you. it. I mean, I remember seeing um, <laughs> huge artists who came to do concerts here um, in the Savannah during the year come back under hat and shades in the carnival time, under shades and recording, and then go back up and next thing you know, they have all night long. But you remember, <laughs> we were we were the Queen's Park of Savannah when the Jacksons came down, yep. and Michael went like, sugar what? <laughs> no, actually, it's Randy, he brought on Randy because he couldn't handle it. Yeah. He brought it, introduced Randy, who sang, mm -hmm. Audrey, what you call me? Sugar bum, sugar bum, bum. Sugar bum, sugar bum. That was, that was, that was, yeah, yeah. That was comical. It was surprising, but it was, it was comical. And okay. then, uh, if, just for mm -hmm. the record's sake, the next album they did, the Jacksons, the big song of the album was Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. Shake Your Body, yes. Mm -hmm. Which has 
Soca. And you're hearing that soca r- 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 run inside of there. There yes. was a European mix which mm-hmm. had iron in it. And on the album says um, the European mix. And that, says, was 12, that was a 12 bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it has um, mm-hmm. um, car hub on it with mm-hmm. iron they put on it. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. All right. Now, so soca is, um, is, is the sound heard throughout the world. And um, folks are beginning to say, well, let's accept that. And where, what happened to the soca after that, what direction it took after that is something that I really want us to explore because I think it is worthy of exploration. Right after I just do a little bit of this because I did promise I would give you a little bit of uh, home shanty. Yeah, this is Ras Shorty I, a.k.a. Garfield. Uh, Ras Shorty I. Garfield Blackman, and that is uh, the old uh, Hindu mantra is called uh, Om Shanti. We're talking about the movement of the music. Talk about the Chutney Soka just for a moment, uh, because I want to come into where we are today and talk about uh, the product of diversifying, but I don't want to leave any station out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we already picked up at the junction. We got all these people and the input. We got the bands making the soca music, the uh, new acceptable form of Calypso. Kitchener came in at that point, just before you go to Chutney Soka. How long mm-hmm. it took Birdie to come in? To uh, accept it, uh, About two years later. About two years yeah. later on. Okay, let's yeah. talk about Ras Shorty and the Chutney Soka. Talk to me about that. Um, Ras Shorty did Om Shanti album at Semp. Mm-hmm. While we were working on the album, a regular client of Semp, um, I'm going to give kudos to somebody that has not been recognized whatsoever. And I'll just give you a short story. A regular client was Mohin Mohammed. Windsor Record Show. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That was the man who d- um, produced and manufactured and sold most Indian music in Trinidad, Guyana, Suriname, all through the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. He was a regular client. He was there every month doing two, three albums a month, recording Harry Mahabi, everybody. So after Om Shanti, um, around the same time, Moin said, Diva, the African people doing this thing, they're crossing over. Why the Indian people can't cross over the next way? Mm-hmm. I say, well, mm-hmm. what is the problem? Mm-hmm. He say, all right, I just wanted to get your blessing, so let, let, let us try something, no? Mm. I said, I am game. Next thing I know, he brought this guy called Professor Anu Jolota from India, which I got to realize now, he t- well, I know he's alive now, but he turned out to be the biggest thing in the music and film industry in India. Mm. And he threw Anu Jolota and Beaver Henderson in the room and said, come up with something. <laughs> And that was the start of Chutney Soka. Mm-hmm. It was the first Mastana Bahar pageant album. That's right. But it was rejected by the Indian community mm-hmm. for the first two years. Uh, at Sundar Popo, Hero Ram. I mean, all those who became stars, mm-hmm. they were on that album. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that was the foundation. The next, um, although we worked on this, some of the staff after, after that, I hadn't seen Mohin for a while. Mm-hmm. And what is it? Kamala didn't start at this sham, took over, Moin stepped in, and then Rafi continued. Yeah, yeah. There was a whole Muhammad rundown on the Mastana Bar. Muhammad, yes. w- yeah. Mo- mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, Moin was the one with the production guy mm-hmm. and into sales and marketing. The next time I saw him, unfortunately, um, he was, that was the idea, Jahaji Bai. And I was honored. I got all the awards that year. Mm-hmm. And he was given a lifetime award. Yes. Unfortunately, he was dying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we just kind of held on to each other. And he cried on my shoulder. And he said, Beaver, look where we started. And yes. nobody ever really understood then, and they never knew. And I mean, I always give this guy the credit. So, he, it'll be just very clear. Moin Mohammed Moin, must get the credit yeah, uh, the for the Chutney Soka. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to watch my clock and, as I try to get this whole story yeah. inside of here, Beaver. Um, so, we've got Chutney Soka now joining uh, the, the, the movement of the traditional mm-hmm. Soka. The, the soca music now seem to have either evolved or gone into a different direction. You were the musician, you were the producer. What would you call it? Would you say it has dissolved? Is it diluted? Has it improved? Or is it going through the natural metamorphosis that all music goes through? Uh, no, it, it, it's natural change. It's, um, with the difference now is a generational change, mm. um, a major generational change. But this is happening musically globally, mm-hmm. um, where I talk about the greatest musicians and great musicians of that era. We hardly had have any of these today. Mm-hmm. So... A lot of these great musicians are replaced by great technicians. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of technology involved. Sound builders. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Beat builders and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been able to survive mm-hmm. because I have adapted like a chameleon. So mm-hmm. um, I've, I've always been tech. So that's, mm-hmm. that's good for me. Um, but now there are a lot of guys who are not musicians. Yes. Um, 
And uh, you find some of the top producers in the world now are DJs. You know, so like you have the Calvin Harris's and mm. you know some of these guys. Um, so the, the, all of their musicians up to a point, they are DJ, so they, they're looking at production from a different perspective. Is this dissimilar to what happened in Jamaica with the sound system? Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. Is, 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 is it is similar, not very, similar, it is similar. Okay. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm, I mean, it's, mm-hmm, it's a mm-hmm. global thing, it's a global yes, thing. Yes. Um, but Trinidad mm-hmm. is normally five, ten years behind, so we are now catching up. Um, actually, I'm very heavily part of a movement called the CDM movement, which mm-hmm. Caribbean dance movement is a very electronic CDM, music, yes. like with mm-hmm. EDM. Mm-hmm. The Caribbean version of EDM. European uh, right. dance music, yes. Um, but basically, all right, I mean, I tell you now, my mission from here on in is to take, um, to create music that is not relevant to carnival competition. Mm. Mm. Um, because to me, that is what's destroying the whole thing. Because uh, what you have is a generation of kids who are writing and producing music to please five people on a table with 20 points for lyrics, 20 points yes. for lyrics. Judge a sheet. And taken away from the creativity and everything else. Mm. Take away those two and, million, and one million dollar prizes, you will just see creativity blow open in the mm. country again. Mm. But everybody's writing for that prize money. That's why everything sounds almost the same way. Because it's criteria. Mm-hmm. It's criteria mm-hmm. writing mm-hmm. criteria budget, uh, writing. So in order for us to talk in terms of um, this aspect of our culture, um, exporting this, we have to get rid of the musical cookie cutting machine, is what you're saying. Um, no, what I would suggest is the competition. Mm. In other words, if you win once, come out. Uh-huh. Yeah, just come out, just come out. Um, let it be for amateurs, for kids to be recognized. Okay. Not for okay. professionals to keep coming over and over. There's no else in the world that oh, happens. Okay. okay. You know? Okay. Um, it must be an incentive for amateurs to get in there, get their big break, and move on, not dissimilar to um, the voice and so on. You get in, you get what you get again. Right. Goodbye. Okay. Imagine like um, somebody's going to w- go in and voice and go in the back next year and do as a, as a career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, people mm-hmm. do competition here as a career. Mm-hmm. I mean, but you're saying for, for the bigger picture and for the purpose we're talking about, it stifles the music. It, Big time, big, big time. Mm-hmm. I'm encouraged, just by the way, just a, a, as an aside, and I wanted to ask you about this. The Prime Minister Best Village competition is back in. That's another aspect of our culture that I, I, I think is something worthy of export. I mean, when you're talking about cultural um, ex- export. Yeah, let me see. It's how it's, it's, how it's packaged. Mm. Um, the, the, the different aspects. All right. If you go back to Calypso, um, use, you can't get rid of it. And you should not get rid of it mm-hmm. because that should be the reference point in which you look back and which you pull things. Like, I mean, I do like master classes at UTT, well, just lectures to kids and stuff. Mm. And when it comes to Calypso and Soka, the root of what we do is something called call and response. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of yes, uh, yes. African thing. Um, best Village is like the book of it. Yes, indeed. You know, and mm-hmm. you can't get rid of it, you're not supposed mm-hmm. to get rid of mm-hmm. it. Um, there's no other archive that keeps that tradition alive. Right. So you have to keep that alive. Um, so even if a kid was just 16, 17 years old with a look at a computer and um, Pro Tools or whatever, Ableton, um, looking for something, go back into that route. It's instructive that you differentiate between the Soka and the Calypso as, as two separate rooms but still in the same house. And it's important that it be maintained. But why would you, uh, what would you suggest can be done to keep Calypso alive because Soka has has the profile. It has the it, it has a spotlight on it, and mm-hmm. the Calypsos you don't have that happening. Thus, no. there is no incentive for many people to continue doing that. If you say that they are both part of the room and one is a reference point, as it were, mm-hmm. it means it should share equal prominence. Actually, um, and how, how I illustrate it because I, I do my jazz show in Tobago. Mm-hmm. Jazz festivals are not really jazz festivals; they're, mu- they're music festivals, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? And what you find is music of the 60s, 70s, 80s, and whatever, before 90s come up. Um, so you would not put somebody as currently on the charts, now big, and headlining all these jazz festivals. It's, right. it's a different market. Right. So in other words, one is commercial, um, present pop commercial, pop culture, mm. and one is heritage. Um, so the same way that if I do jazz, um, I could bring somebody from the 70s or the 80s and there's an age group that pre- appreciates it. It's, you can call it jazz, it's really music. Um, we can find structure. forums to make them more involved in, is what you're saying, exactly. the traditional so, clips. So. You know, the music market has always had two ends of it, mm-hmm. globally. That's always had what is present mm-hmm. and what is past. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then there's an underground that is searching for the future. So, but on the market itself is always present and past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our present is, calip- is um, soca, our past is calypso. 
and that is the foundation. And Calypso now is more important through the Caribbean because that is rooted into reggae, into zouk, into kadans, into all, all the other Caribbean musics mm-hmm. because it was there before. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. Know? So that is something you, can, you cannot get rid of. I wanted to, 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 to spend the time on this because um, one of the things that happen is that you have folks who are worried that the um, Im- improvisations, the, 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 the um, redirection and all, changes happening in the art form is moving folks so far away from the moorings that very soon they would not recognize uh, the art form called Calypso. So that's why I said it's so, it was poignant that you uh, uh, differentiated between both and, and, and state that they can live in the same house. Still, you have not offered me um, something that I think is going to be in, instrumental in keeping that Calypso art form moving, which is an incentive for, oh. for for people to keep doing it. Give me two months I'll deliver a product and I'll show you. It's yeah. coming, it's coming. Mm-hmm. No, but mm-hmm. the thing is at the end of the day, um, well, we have a unique problem here though, where we dispose things too quickly. The rest of the world, sadly, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, not not as much as Trinidad does. Mm. Um, in other words, I could go into North America now, I can find Cajun music, bluegrass music, music from the 50s, music, swing music from the 60s, music from the 30s, and radio stations dedicate, you know, um, stages and shows will dedicate themselves to that. Mm-hmm. Trinidad, where can you find a Calypso show this weekend? Okay. All mm-hmm. right. So in other words, we dispose of. Mm-hmm. We have to learn to stop disposing because there's, you know, we always feel there's a threat. There's always this crab in a barrel syndrome that um, if you give Calypso too much space, the old people taking away the space that the young people should have. Mm. And if you give Soka too much space, the young people sque- trying to squeeze out the old people. So you are an event coordinator. In addition to your jazz festival in Tobago in conclusion, how uh, we go about doing this is creating avenues to have the music showcase. On, on It has to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to have, you have to have show, you must have platforms on which kids could come forward to mm. do what is their present expression. Mm-hmm and their future concept of expression. But you must also have places where, platforms where the older heads um, can ha- showcase and for kids to see what was happening and use as a foundation. Because I can tell you straight and with no, without any reservation, what we were doing in the 80s, the same five big bands, you know me, I used to jump on stage. Every time I jumped, I came down. Who I used to see off the side of my stage was Marshall Montano. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he was watching, yes. He was mm-hmm. learning, he was absorbing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so you can't get rid of what was there before. You need that to be teaching to the next generation. You must be encouraged then by the initiative of the uh, Prime Minister who pushed for them to have this local um, session going on where kids can come in and actually do the Calypso art form that is going on right now. Well, I didn't know about it. I mean, Beyonce, I've been, my head been down into a major thing I'm developing right now. Mm-hmm. Actually, this week I'm going to lift my head up and mm. kind of the rest okay. of the world. Okay. Um, but I put it this way. I know Keith Rowley is very cultural because he and his wife have been um, patrons to my show for the last 10 years, and I've mm-hmm. seen them in other shows. In other words, they're very culturally aware. Um, and I think he made a statement recently, he's going to put Pan back on the map kind mm. of situation. Mm. Um, it has to happen. Mm. Um, and these economic times, it has to, has to happen. You know, we can't be throwing away our quarters every minute, you know. Man who actually does it in the engine room, as uh, Chris uh, Tambu uh, once said. Uh, was it Michael? It was David. It was David who uh-huh. said in the engine room. Carl Beaver Henderson, thanks for taking the time to come in this morning. We could sit down and talk for a very, very long time, and you know that. Yes. Um, but we will have to um, lock it up here, uh, as it were. Fa- Go ahead. Just do me a favor. What's that? When you get a chance, bring in Winston Devines. Um, Winston, Winston good morning to you. I think uh, we will do that. But you said I need two days. I wonder if we can suspend. Oh, pre <laughs> pre-record him so you know how long you can And we take. can do it in parts. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Beaver, again, for your contribution, just like I salute King Austin and, and many of the great contributors here. You uh, in that uh, realm, you in that category for me, and I salute you this morning.